What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out an awesome new development that means lots of free grass and vegetation assets for everyone. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so you might've heard of G-Scatter or Grasswald before. Basically, Grasswald is a collection of different plant assets that you can use um, inside of your Blender models in order to create really realistic scenes um, using grass or leaves or other things like that. Um, up until last week, this has been a paid collection of add-ons. And so in addition to the assets, they also have a tool called G-Scatter, which is a free scattering add-on. For Blender. And so last week they rolled out some kind of massive news, which is that um, they're kind of pivoting a little bit and focusing on a new tool that they're putting together called Graswald AI. And so Graswald AI is basically a tool that's designed to allow you to take photos of an object and then it's going to generate 3D models of that object. And it looks like they're focusing right now specifically on like product type stuff. Um, and I've not seen what the underlying topology looks like on models like this or anything like that. But best as I can tell, what happens is you can take a video of your product and their AI platform is going to create a 3D model out of that video. And so right now, um, it looks like that is basically waitlist only. So if you have like a company, then they'll do like a demo for you. But if you're just an individual user, you can join the waitlist right here. So um, this tool by itself is really interesting and I'm excited to follow it, but it doesn't really look like there's a whole lot that we as regular users can use at the moment. And so as a part of that, they're basically noting that they're not gonna have the resources to work on this new tool and also keep keep this existing library up to date the way that they would like to. And so because of that, they're gonna make all of the assets in their library freely available for everyone. And you can just go to store.gscatter.com in order to download those assets. And so let's hop over into the store and take a look at some of these. So basically what you've got is you've got collections of different assets that you can scatter. And so you can kind of see some of the plants individually by clicking on them right here. Um, and notice how those are available for FBX, ABC, or G scatter. Um, the G scatter ones are the ones we're going to focus on because we're working in Blender. And so if you click on one of these, like the field meadow, for example, if you click on this, this is going to pop this up and notice how there's different collections in here. So for example, if you wanted the wild field meadow, you could click on it and there's an option to download that entire asset pack. And so I've downloaded a couple of these. These are pretty big files. So I think one of them was one and a half gigabytes. Another one was 780 um, megabytes. So they are pretty large, but I've downloaded a couple of them and let's go ahead and let's jump over into Blender and scatter them inside of our scene. One thing you are going to want to do is click on the button right here for download G scatter. And when you do that, you're going to want to pick the version that you want to download. In this situation, I'm using the one for 3.5 and up. Um, I think it's probably, I've not tried it on 4. I think it's unlikely that it's going to work on 4.1 considering they're planning on doing this specifically to um, not continue updating the add-on. So you might have to work on 4.0 and below, but you want to download this, which is basically going to be a zip file. And then you want to jump over into Blender and you want to install it. And so when you do an edit, preferences, you just want to click on install and you just want to go find that zip file and enable Grasswald or G scatter by Grasswald right here. And so notice how there's an option over here to set your library directory. And so for me, notice how I've downloaded a couple of those and unzipped them into a folder on an external drive. You can put those wherever you want, but you're going to want to set that directory. And when you do that, um, notice how you can set if this is going to link or append. I'm going to set this to append right here. All right, and so once you have that installed, what you're gonna do is you're gonna tap the in letter on your keyboard, you're gonna click on G scatter, and this is going to allow you to select a surface. So notice how I can click the little eyedropper and then select a surface right here. Now there's an option here to download free assets. You can also download the assets from the G scatter store in a web browser and then place them in that folder that you set in your preferences. But once you do that, notice how if you click on this button right here, and so notice how this is going to show me all of the assets that are contained in that folder, as well as all of the environments that are contained in that folder. And so let's say, because I downloaded this wild field meadow that I wanted to place it on this surface. Now, 
Notice how you have options in here to generate a new terrain, use a default, or click on custom. In this case, we want to select a terrain, so we're going to use the eyedropper to select this plane right here, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to add an environment. And so when we do that, what that's going to do is that's going to scatter these different systems on your surface right here. Now, one thing to note about this is these are big kind of heavy assets. Um, so this is going to be slow. You probably don't want to dump this level of detail on like a huge, um, huge plane or anything like that. Like in this case, this actually works okay. Um, it's not especially bad, but if this was larger, it would be placing a lot of stuff on this surface. But notice what this did is this came in here and this basically placed a bunch of different objects in here and it scattered them. And so I can click in here and I can adjust a lot of different things by scrolling down and using these adjustments right here. And so notice how this is using a noise distribution in here in order to adjust where those things are placed. So I can adjust things like the scale of that noise. Um, I can adjust the detail level, the roughness, other things like that. And basically what it's doing is it's generating noise on the surface and then it's using that noise in order to set where these plants are placed. But notice how I can adjust the seed for each one of these. So for example, if I was to pick the small grass right here, notice how that noise distribution is going to be different for that system than for the other system right here. But you can also adjust things like the density of the objects, right? So notice how if I bring this down, I'm getting less objects. If I bring this up, I'm getting more objects right here. So we can use this in order to really quickly place objects on surfaces like this. And so we've got these all in here. You can also toggle them on and off like this. So you can adjust each one of these individually. You can also set how much of this is actually displayed right? Because what's being placed and what's being displayed are two different things. So notice how if I, for example, bring the display percentage up to 100, notice how there's actually a lot more grass on this surface than, than is being displayed. And so what we can do is we can bring this down so that it only displays a few of these, right? So if I bring all of these down to 10%, for example, notice how it's displaying a lot less of these than it's actually scattering. That's to keep your computer from crashing um, when it's trying to display all of this different stuff. But let's say that I was to add just a simple light. So we'll just add a sun just for the sake of what we're doing here. I'll just jump us over into rendered mode right here. I'm gonna bump that power up a little bit and then let's add a camera. So I'm just gonna do a shift A add a camera, I'm gonna hit the zero key on my numpad and hit home. And then I'm going to jump over into my view and I'm gonna lock my camera to my view. And I'm just going to place the camera right here. So just a simple render, nothing super complicated or anything like that. Now, one thing that you might do before you render this out is you might go ahead and save your model. So just do a file save. But what you're gonna notice is when I actually do a full render, right? I'm gonna click in here and do a render image. You're gonna see a lot more geometry in your full render than you do inside of Blender itself because we've used those environment settings to reduce the amount of stuff that's showing up in my scene. And so just looking at this really quickly, notice how you can see all of this grass, but if you look at the actual scene, there's less of it. So that's basically a tool that's designed to help you keep this manageable inside of your viewport while you make different changes like this. And so notice how you can also set like an overall optimization. And there's also an option here for camera culling. And so camera culling is basically going to set this so that it culls out all of the objects or, or hides all of the objects that you can't see in your camera view. And so let's say, for example, I'm going to jump out of this real quick. And we'll just turn this on. So I'm going to select this camera right here. Notice what happens if I move this camera over and you can only kind of see it right here. So we'll move this a little bit closer, but notice what this is doing is this is culling out everything that the camera wouldn't see. So basically it's using the camera location in here um, in order to set what's actually displayed in your model. And it's not showing geometry where your camera can't see. 
So what that does is that hides a ton of the geometry in here that's not inside of the camera's field of view um, so that you can only render out what you can see inside of your scene right here. And so say you wanted to create your own environment or scatter just individual objects, what you could do is say that we've got a new plane, you could select it, you could jump into your library and you can pick one of these objects. So in this case, maybe this uh, broadleaf plantain right here. I'm gonna click on this. Notice how you have options for levels of detail, right? So more or less detailed, I'll put this on one. I'm gonna click on the option for scatter selected. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna scatter this on my object right here. So notice how it's created a scatter system in here. Well, then you can scroll down and you can adjust things like the distribution, right? So I can adjust my density. Oh like this, but I can also adjust things like the scale um, and I can randomize scale right here to bigger or smaller. I can also randomize things like rotation in here, but you can basically randomize multiple different sets of objects in here just by doing this. So say I wanted to bring in this orchard grass and do the same thing. I'll click on scatter selected. That's gonna bring grass in and then I just need to bump up the number of objects that are being placed on this surface. So we want to go into distribution right here, bump our density up in order to create our own system in here. So it got a little bit heavy, but you can see how dropping individuals in here is pretty easy. Now there is an option in here for creating your own environment. And so you're basically going to have to fill in all of these different things, including a thumbnail. And obviously this is just a random picture that I pulled up, but you can put your own in here, but you can basically create an environment from the current scatter surface in here, which is also really cool. So you can generate and save your own environments for use later. And then there's some extra stuff in here like packing a blend file with the external files, packing the linked assets, meaning you're able to uh, kind of place this all in here without having to have the whole asset library. But overall, very cool tool set, especially since it's available now for free for Blender. All right, so that's where I'm in this video. I will link to Grasswald and G-Scatter in the notes down below. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this development. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.